Well, here I am in a hotel room again in Hillsboro, Oregon. And I'll be here through next week, and then I'll be in New Mexico, Rio Rancho. And then I might have a couple of days at home, and then uh, probably back to New Mexico, I'm not sure. But the point is, no chance to really make progress on the theater. But I do have some uh, updates. I got the main uh, left and right main lines up and playing. Uh, and I did get some short video clips and some still pictures that I'll uh, make an update with right now. Uh, I made one video with some music playing, but if I post that, it'll probably get taken down by YouTube for copyright infringement. So, and it was just recorded with my uh, phone anyway, so it's not like you'd be able to tell what the lines sound like, but I can tell you it's, it's pretty impressive. I'm pretty happy with the way they're sounding. So, but anyway, I'll uh, get on with the update and I think I'll start with uh, going over the details of how those lines are wired. I think some people probably have some questions about that. So we'll get started. Okay, here we have the wiring diagram, but I'm probably going to be making some changes to it. Uh, one problem with a system like this, if you have a noise floor, it's very low on, let's say, one group of four drivers like this. It's not really a problem. You might have to get really close to it to even hear it. But if this has a really low noise floor added to another really low noise floor added to another and so on and so on and so on, it can get to the point where you can hear it. Maybe not very bad, but still hear it further out into the listening area. So I'm going to probably make some changes. But right now, we have two separate amplifiers driving these 16 drivers. Two groups of eight. It's a you know, four that are in parallel for two ohms in series with another group of four. So it's four ohms. So this amplifier is driving four ohms. This amplifier is driving four ohms. I'm probably going to change that. I'm probably going to put this group in series with this group. So it's eight ohms. And then uh, let one amplifier channel drive that. It'll still have more than enough output. And because the groups will be in series, that will cut uh, both the voltage and the current of any noise levels in half. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I mean, I don't know, I probably should have never even thought about doing it this way on the tweeters because they're so efficient and they're a very linear impedance, very easy to drive. So, both. so I've got one amplifier I'm just driving two of them as an eight ohm load because these are four ohm drivers, got two in series and then the same thing with this next pair. So I'm probably, because these all four are all zero dB down, I'll probably drive all four of those with uh, one amplifier. And, you know, so I've already reduced the number of required amplifier channels by two. And it'll do the same thing because uh, you can make this, well, right now it's an eight ohm load. Uh, you could even make it, uh, I don't know, you could even make it a 16 ohm load, probably still be fine. You may have to play around with that and see. But uh, I don't think there's any need. I think I was really overkilling it big time by having separate amps on those. Now, when we get to the next groups, like this group and this group, we could also do the same thing, put those on one amplifier channel instead of two. And that way we can uh, do the attenuate, because these are both attenuated uh, minus 2.7 dB relative to the center ones. But we can still move those and have just one amplifier because, you know, what I'm finding is now that I have these main lines playing, they have phenomenal output. It doesn't really take, you don't have to turn it up much at all. You just have phenomenal output. So even though those, those basic amplifiers are not a lot of power, it doesn't matter. You have so many drivers that it's a ton of output. So even if I put these together in series, drive them with one amplifier, uh, that can reduce the uh, the background noise and still have plenty of output. So once we get to these, we're already attenuated 
5.4 dB on this pair matched down here with this pair, uh, it becomes more difficult to break up the amplifiers now. Uh, probably going to have to keep that a separate amplifier channel. It's also a separate DSP channel. And uh, same thing with this. And because the 2x4 HD uh, doesn't have more than four outputs, this fifth bank down here, fifth attenuation level, seventh bank is fifth attenuation level. I'm just using a resistor network uh, off of the output from the DSP that drives this channel to also drive this channel with the additional 2.7 dB of attenuation. So I think this is all going to change. And I haven't even put together the crossover yet uh, for the center channel, but I'll probably go ahead and do the same thing with it and reduce the number of amplifier channels that are required for it also. But this just gives you a general idea of how things are hooked up right now. It's probably going to change and reduce the number of amplifier channels, hopefully get that uh, background noise down to the point where it's not noticeable at all out in the listening area, because right now it, it kind of is. I mean, it's not terrible, but you know, it'd be better if it wasn't noticeable at all. So we're going to work on that, but that's what the, uh, the wiring looks like right now. Okay, let's uh, continue on with an update on the Ultimax 18-inch uh, subwoofers that will be infinite baffled in the attic. 16 hertz. That amplifier is about 75 watts a channel and it's running pretty close to clipping. And we have the two Ultimax 18 inch drivers getting a little bit of excursion there if you can see that. And we have them tied together with these threaded rods. And well, that went out of focus. We have a nickel standing on its edge. Another nickel standing on its edge. looks like the cancellation of mechanical energy works pretty well. And there we have the other baffles. So these are going to be mounted in the attic. And see if they stay nice and stable so even a nickel wouldn't fall over. Not too bad. So there we are. They're pretty much sitting in place where they're going to be. Don't know how well you can see that with just the light from the uh, cell phone camera here. You can see an 18 inch driver will mount in there and one in there and so on. So a total of eight of the drivers. The plan is to let them not sit on the sheetrock where they are now because when the drivers are in there they'll probably fall through. Uh, I'm going to mount some uh, rails on the sides it will sit on top of these 2x12s and hold them maybe a quarter of an inch or so above the sheetrock. And then later when I, uh, you know, cut the openings, you know, the, all the sheetrock inside there will be cut out. And then I will trim that out so that, uh, you know, it uh, seals it off there. And uh, then this will all be open, which is where the drivers are going to be. And then all the rest of this over here and everywhere else in here. We didn't put any insulation in this because we were waiting for me to do this. I mean, I have the uh, spray foam up here, but once this is all done and I've blocked off the area where I don't want spray foam, uh, we'll spray foam the whole area up here, including the tops of these things to help deaden those and so on. So anyway, I got to get to work on this. <laughs> 